Listen, I love a clean home as much as the next person, but I don't always love the process of getting it clean. So over the years, I have developed some cleaning hacks and tips to make the whole thing just that much easier. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura, and I think when it comes to cleaning, most of us are pretty lazy. So here are some housekeeping hacks that are going to make the job that much better for you, that much quicker, but not only that, not just how to clean things quicker, but how to keep them clean for longer so that you can stretch out that time in between cleaning. Okay, let's start with some general cleaning hacks, things that are going to make your home look or feel cleaner. And the very first one will come as no surprise if you've been hanging around this channel for any length of time. And that is, is to put donation boxes everywhere. I bet you have been in a situation where you have found something that you really no longer want or need, but because there isn't an available box or an available way to discard of it on the spot, or because you think, well, I don't want to just trash this, it's still kind of good, maybe somebody could use it, what do you do? you put it back <laughs> instead of actually getting rid of it. Whereas when you have a donation box, when you have something readily available, it's so much easier to immediately put that thing into the box. Now, yes, you will still at some point have to get that box out of your home, but actually getting it out of a cupboard or off a shelf or out of a drawer or something like that is step number one. You're taking it out of a regular rotation so that it's not cluttering up your surfaces or the areas that you use most often. Now, over time, you may be able to reduce the number of donation boxes you have, but in the beginning, if you were kind of just starting out, I would say put them in as many places as possible, particularly in places like your kitchen and your closet. Next up then is the way that you clean, I guess. It's just a way to make sure that you are hitting all of the spots, all of the areas that you need to tackle. And the way that you do that is to start at the door to the room or at the entrance to the room and then work either clockwise or anti-clockwise, whichever is your preference. That way, as you're going around, you are making sure that you are hitting every area that needs to be hit. You're not skipping anything. You're not kind of moving from one corner over to this corner and just doubling up on the work that you have to do going back and forth. By starting in one spot and then working your way around until you get back to that spot, you are ensuring that you have cleaned all the corners. If you've got stuff in the middle, then kind of do a spiral, you know, do all of the outside first and then come in and do the middle and then back to the door or entrance. As you're going around, then make sure that you are also working from top to bottom. There is no point starting at the bottom and then going and trying to get cobwebs or dust or something off a higher surface and then everything is just all that debris is falling onto the surfaces that you have just cleaned. So start at the top, let everything fall down and then keep wiping as you go, finishing up with the floor. Now before we move on to the more specific cleaning hacks, the final general tip I have for you is to have some sort of cleaning schedule or routine. Even if that means just doing a little bit every day or a little bit most days, why that is going to help is because when you let things get out of hand, it becomes a much bigger job. If you leave things to kind of soak in or dry up or something, then it becomes a lot harder to get things back to clean. Keeping on top of it, on the other hand, is one of those kind of a stitch in time situations. It saves you from having to do a much bigger job down the line. Now, if at this point you're thinking, I have no idea where to even start with a cleaning routine, I do have a small cleaning course. It's a 30 day challenge that will basically take you step by step through how to clean your home. It won't be a really deep clean, but with a few minutes a day, you will hit all of the main areas in your home. So by the end of the month, you can sit back and relax knowing that everything or at least all the main things have been taken care of. It is 30 prompts that you can do in a few minutes at a time to get your home clean. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, starting out with a good kind of routine or a good structure or process to follow, I will link that for you in the description box. Next then, let's talk about some more specific cleaning tasks, how you can do these a lot easier. Starting with cleaning your microwave. My microwave gets messy very quickly because I'm not a good cook, not at all. So, you know, if it can't be done in the microwave, uh, pretty much I'm not cooking it. <laughs> 
honestly our microwave broke last year and I did not know what to do <laughs> myself but yes it gets grotty very quickly because it sees a lot of use what I do is I fill a bowl with one cup water one cup vinegar I pop it in there put the microwave on for like two to five minutes depending on the strength of your microwave and what it does is essentially steam clean the inside of your microwave and then all you have to do is carefully you know with gloves or something remove the bowl it will be hot and then just wipe down the inside and all of that kind of dried on gunk and dirt and grime will basically just melt right off it is wonderful you can also use a few drops of lemon essential oil or something like that in the bowl if you prefer that citrusy scent but yes really quick great way to clean your microwave one of the tasks i hate doing it needs to be done on a fairly regular basis in this house sticking with appliances then your dishwasher if you have one one of the best inventions ever you can wash so much more than just your dishes in the dishwasher it's really great for kids toys if you have them you know and if you've got small ones like lego bricks or something like that you can put them in a little mesh bag pop them all on the top rack of your dishwasher wash away another great thing that you can clean in your dishwasher listen this saved me but that is the filters in your oven hood they are really hard to clean they get so greasy and disgusting so quickly but you can just pop them out and pop them into your dishwasher and let your dishwasher take care of them oh that's a good one now this next one i haven't personally tried but i know other people who do it and get great results and that is to wash your baseball caps and even some of your shoes in the top rack of your dishwasher i do have a friend of a friend though who washes her toilet brushes and the little holders in her dishwasher that is not something that i would do or recommend necessarily but just an example of how many different things you could potentially wash in your dishwasher. Now let's talk about washing your actual dishwasher because once you've put some of that stuff through, you're not going to want to run a like normal dish cycle immediately afterwards. Cleaning out your dishwasher is as easy as leaving a bowl of vinegar on the top rack and running it through a really hot cycle. The vinegar will just help to deodorize everything and also it's an antibacterial agent so we'll get rid of all of those horrible germs. For bigger items then like let's say the shelves from your fridge or I've even seen someone recently do this, the screens from their windows. I personally have never cleaned the screens on our windows but your bathtub is a great place to do things like that because they're big and bulky and awkward and it can be really tricky to try and clean those things in a small sink put a large bath towel down in your bath to stop it getting any scuffs or scratches or anything run some hot water and then put in whatever large item you are cleaning leave it there to soak for a little bit and then gently scrub or wipe it down much much easier than trying to do it in a small sink okay speaking of baths then and just bathrooms in general if you watched one of my recent videos where I was doing a monthly reset you will know that I had a tap where the water pressure was almost non-existent that was due to a buildup of like just sediment and dirt and stuff right inside the tap head so a great way to get rid of all of that kind of sediment and lime scale and stuff that does build up in your taps and shower heads is to fill a little plastic bag a ziploc bag maybe with some vinegar and then tie it over the taps making sure that the tap head is submerged in the vinegar tie it up with some elastic bands or something leave it there overnight the vinegar will have to break down all of that lime scale and just general grot and dust and dirt that builds up in there and then you should not have a problem with you know water that is barely dripping out of your shower head really easy way to keep your taps and your shower heads clean with very minimal effort on your part i love those tasks where you can just kind of like set it and forget it just let something else do the work for you speaking of which here's a bonus tip for you what i'm thinking of uh, but give your cleaners if you're using them time to do the work i see so many people you know spraying a cleaner and then immediately wiping it off but it doesn't have time to you know like break down all of that dirt and grime or kill all of that bacteria if you are immediately wiping it away so with your toilet bowl cleaners your multi-surface cleaners whatever it may be 
give them a few minutes to actually do the job and then when you come to wipe down that surface or whatever it is it will be so much easier if you are using cleaners let them do the heavy lifting for you okay one last tip here before i move on to some things that will keep your home from feeling clean even if you have cleaned it and also how to actually keep it clean once you have put in some effort up front that is to use all of the attachments on your vacuum cleaner. Your vacuum cleaner is a little miracle worker. It can do so much more than just suck dust out of your carpet or off your floors. It can also be used to clean vents. It can be used to dust all the baseboards. It can be used to clean furniture, anything sort of like fabric. It can be used to clean out your car. It can be used to get rid of like cobwebs and stuff out of all of those crevices all those nooks and crannies so have a flick through the user manual or do a quick google search figure out what all of those different attachments do and then put them to use you will be amazed at how many jobs your vacuum cleaner can do for you okay let's move on to something that is going to thwart your cleaning efforts because it does not matter how long you have spent cleaning it doesn't matter how spotless your home is it doesn't matter how sparkling your countertops are if your home smells bad, all of that work was just a waste. Now there are some obvious things like, you know, pet toys and blankets and things. Again, those are things you can run through the dishwasher or the washing machine. There are odors from shoes, like baking soda is great for getting rid of odors out of lots of things. But there are areas that we do not necessarily think of that may be a little trickier to um, deodorize. And the main culprit that I am thinking of here is your drains. So it is really important to clean out and deodorize your drains on a regular basis. And this is a very simple process. First of all, you wanna chuck some boiling water down there that is going to kind of loosen or melt any grease or grime. After that, then you want to pour half a cup to a cup of baking soda down there. For most drains, I would generally just do a half cup, maybe even a quarter cup, but for like the kitchen, kitchen sink and the garbage disposal, I will use a full cup for that. Then you want to go ahead and pour a cup or two of white vinegar down there. Now this is all going to fizzle up, so make sure that you are covering the drain so that it is pushing that down, helping to clear out those pipes and not just coming all back up into your sink or your shower or your bath. That's pointless. Cover over the drain, let it push all the way through your pipes. Both of those will help to deodorize and sanitize your pipes, getting rid of all of those nasty smells and the things that cause them. Once you have given that a few minutes to work, then follow it up with some more boiling water just to help wash away any last remnants. Et voila! a clean smelling home. But not only that, it will also help to prevent clogs and build up. So two jobs for the price of one. Okay, let's talk upkeep, some very simple things that you can do to keep your home cleaner for longer. The first is to line your oven. The oven is one of those appliances that is really tricky to clean. And once it is clean, you do not want to have to do that job again for a very long time. So use an oven liner. While we're on the topic, also use liners for all of your baking sheets and roasting dishes and things like that. It is going to make the cleanup much easier afterwards. It's much easier to clean a liner or like a baking sheet or some foil or something than it is to clean an entire oven or scrub a roasting dish. Also, now this is something that I started doing probably a year or two ago and it's just made such a difference, even though it's such a small thing, but that is to double line my bins. So I used to put a bag in the bin and you take it out and empty it but inevitably over time things would start to get really grotty and the bins would have to be washed out and that is one of my least favorite tasks. Now I put two bags in so even if the first one does rip or leak or anything there is still another bag in there that is catching all of that and my bin stays perfectly clean. I even put a bag in our recycling bin because I found that even though we were just throwing you know paper and cardboard and things like that in there it's still over over time started to get very dusty and dirty so a bag in that one also helped me. So yes line or double line your bins and I also use tape around the edges just to hold that inner bag in place. And this next one oh it's a good one okay that is using dryer sheets to repel 
dust. Okay, so dryer sheets, the way they work in your dryer is that they prevent static. They prevent your clothes from sticking together. Well, they also do the same with dust and surfaces. If you have dusted a surface, and you're like me, you do not want to have to dust that surface for a very long time. I despise dusting and I don't do it nearly as often as I should. But with a dryer sheet, wiping down that area for a short while will repel some dust. And it just means that you can get away with longer periods between dusting sessions. And I am all for that. Okay, one final tip for you before I go, but remember my cleaning course is available if you are looking for some structure and routine and kind of step-by-step -step process to follow, but that is to use music. Not only does it kind of make the whole process a little bit more enjoyable because it's upbeat and you're, you know, listening to something, it's kind of distracting you from the task at hand, but also it can kind of challenge you to get a job done before a specific song ends or a playlist ends. This is one of those things that I like to call a natural timer. So just generally throughout my life, I use timers to help me really focus and get work done as quickly as possible. But there are also natural timers like songs, like ad breaks, things like that, where you can run around and try and get stuff done within those time constraints. So pop on one of your favorite upbeat songs and see how much you can get done before the song ends. Or if you're watching a TV show and an ad break comes on, see how much you can get done before you can get back to putting your feet up again. Really helps the cleaning time to go much quicker and makes it that little bit more enjoyable. And who doesn't want that? Remember to check out my cleaning course. I will link it in the description for you, but I also have a playlist with lots more tips and advice on how to keep your home clean and organized. Until next time, grev mila magrev. Agus pekimeshu shikalua. Slon.